there have been several years in my journey where I probably could have been flying, but I was walking, crawling, to be honest. <laughs> Hey, my eternal friends, Jesus is my rock. That's how I roll. I am walking through the pearly gates of the Mayflower Hotel here with my gorgeous hubby, William Baldwin, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Let's show them. Let's show them. Look at this, guys. Look at the gardens of the inn. Oh, look at the inn. I'm Jack. in my grace pace. Ain't no one gonna take me out. I'm in, in my, my grace, grace pace. pace. So, babe, what do you think of the grace pace? Oh, you came up with all these cool expressions. Pre Cal California preaching. Jesus is my rock and that's how we roll. Peace of Christ. Peace uh, of Christ is in the Bible. <laughs> but the way you popularized it. Yes. Was <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, Holy Spirit activated. Holy Spirit activated. I was getting there. You totally popularized. And did you invent that too? That I invented. Okay. And now, uh, Grace Pace? I mean... The Holy came... Spirit invented it. Not me. That came out. Show them the walk we're on right now. Look at this. Is this just not exquis? We're on our way to the spa. I love you, Shwilly. And uh, what are we going to do there? We're going to do work there. We're going to do a little research for Cal Heel today because we have a Cal Heel. Into the well we go. This is our favorite spot in this new little hotel that we've discovered. <laughs> Yeah, isn't it great? We'll show you. It's like a classic New England library. It's got a fireplace. It's got a chessboard. It's lined with books, wall to wall. All of this beautiful wood. I don't know what kind of wood this is. If it's wood. mahogany, honey, it's mahogany. No, mahogany has the knots in it. I feel like Professor Plum in Clue. And we're at the Mayflower in uh, Washington, Connecticut. We've mm. had a fantastic uh, time here. We <laughs> just wanted to celebrate the year that we've had and the work that we put in and the progress that we've made and the commitment we have to one another and to the work, all the work that lies ahead. The born is, again marriage. Yeah, the born again marriage. She calls it the born again marriage. I call it the BAM. <laughs> oh yeah, the born again marriage. BAM. So something really weird happened last night. Oh, this is wild. I yeah, love this. This is crazy. I was watching, I, I went down the TikTok rabbit hole and I came across this video. This historian was talking about the painting of the Last Supper by Da Vinci. And I lived in Milan in 1986 for about nine months and I went to see the portion of The Last Supper and they were they were um, cleaning it. It was like, I'm not lying, it was like, I'm not, I could, may not be exaggerating, it could have been like a 20 year restoration. Mm -hmm. That's how meticulously and slowly they were removing every speck of dust mm -hmm. and, and, and repair and restoring it. It was, it was at least a 10 year renovation and there were about two thirds of the way through. Da Vinci was painting the portrait of The Last Supper he thought about uh, the face of Christ and how he envisioned the face of Christ. And he wanted to use a human uh, as a model. Mm -hmm. And he walked around the streets of Milan for months and months and months and months and months trying to capture, like trying to visualize the face of Christ. And then he finally found this one man that he said, you're perfect, okay. And he had this man sit for him. And it, I think it took about a month or so <clears throat> to get the face right. Over the course of the next several months, maybe a year, he did all the rest of the disciples. So he he painted Christ, he painted all the disciples, but he was really struggling with what the image of the face of Judas looked like to him, yeah. or what he thought it would look mm -hmm. like, and what would be right for the portrait. He struggled and struggled and struggled, and finally he put the project down, and 11 years later. 11 years? Yes, 11 years later, he was walking through the streets of Milan, and it struck him, and he saw this man, and he said, that's it, you're the one you're Judas. And he said, would you sit for this portrait? Would you sit for this painting? The man said, of course. And this man sat for the painting and this is so mind blowing. And in their conversation, the man started to weep. And I don't know if it was because his feelings were hurt. He was offended because this man saw the face of Judas in his eyes or whatever, but the man started to cry. And Da Vinci said, if I said something to hurt your feelings and to offend you. And he said, don't you remember me, master? He said to Da Vinci and he said, I'm, I'm sorry, we met somewhere. Should I know you? And he said, 11 years ago, you stopped me on the street and you asked me to pose to be the portrait of Christ. No. And it was, yes, it was the same, it was the same man 11 years later. Remember, 11 oh years gosh. back then was like, you know, a third of your lifetime. And the man, the historian that was telling the story said that I believe Da Vinci said that it was so powerful and so, because 
everybody but Christ has a little bit of Christ and a little bit of Judas in them. Mm, that is true. Wow, that wow. Is so powerful. Wow, Bill, that's a great story. Yeah, quick story. We got married. We left the next day. We flew on our honeymoon. We went to Paris. We went to, oh, we went to the Ritz. And the very next morning we wake up and we do what honeymooners do. And we had some great room service. And then I grabbed her by the hand and I said, we're going right to the Louvre and we're going right to the Mona Lisa. What's more romantic than being in Paris and going to the Louvre and going right to the Mona Lisa? And we walk in and it's very quiet. There's all of these students that are quietly, no cell phones back then, they were all doing their own personal drawings. And I grab China by the hand and I'm pulling her through the crowd and I look up at the Mona Lisa and I go, oh my goodness, can you, can you believe it? Leonardo da Vinci. Where? <laughs> and that's what she does. She says, where? <laughs> where? She's looking around the room amongst the students to see where Leonardo da Vinci is. And to, she tried to cover herself by saying, uh, I thought you said Leonardo DiCaprio. We didn't say that. We were married two days earlier. We were married two days earlier. And at that moment, all of a sudden, you know how your life flashes in front of you in these images like And I'm saying five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25, ding! And I'm like, already it's like day two. I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it. She's, I say, honey, I vow to you that one day I'm gonna tell that story to like embarrass you on a talk show. And all of a sudden one day I'm doing the pre-interview on David Letterman. And I had like five great stories that I could have told because they were, you know, that you do the pre interview before you go on the air. And I said, I'm on with the producer like a week before I go on the show. And I'm like, John, I can't remember any of these stories. Like, I'm, I'm just drawing a blank right now. Like, what's one of those things that I like threatened you to tell the story of David Letterman? And China's like, duh, Leonardo da Vinci. And I'm like, oh, that's gold. That's gold. So I tell the producer that. And then I get on the show with Letterman, and we walk through, we do we do the two segments, and at the very last segment, he said, so you just got married, you went on your honeymoon, I heard you went to Paris, I heard you went to the Louvre, and I tell the whole story I just told you. And I get to the punchline where China says, where? And she starts looking around, and the whole house, and David Letterman, I told this on David Letterman, the whole house goes totally silent. Even Letterman, Letterman's looking at me like, I don't get the punchline, and they're dead silent for like two seconds. And then they burst out into hysterics. It was so funny. Well, we just had a lovely meal. And we are headed back to our room. She's going to do a cow heel. I'm going to go to the gym and get in the pool and uh, finish reading my book. You got to keep those buns looking the way they do, babe, because it's a big buns turn. Buns and guns. I know you've seen them in Flatliners and Backdraft, but trust me, this guy's buns. Sliver. Sliver. What are you sure your buns? What do they do? What is it with you and the buns? That's why they gave me the big buns. The Baldwin buns. Oh my gosh, this is gonna really do losing subscribers right now. <laughs> Wham! I'm so sad. We're going home now, but look at this drive. This is gorgeous. This is the Brookfield town. That is the Brookfield Lake, I'm assuming, honey. River. R a river? River. <laughs> if Entry. we. Get Run out of gas. Honey, get this entering sign here. I'm going to be very upset. Entering Ridgefield. Oh, Brookfield, no. Center. Brookfield Center. Oh, uh, look at this light and this church steeple. Stopped into a church. We couldn't sleep together because Jenna wasn't feeling well. She was afraid I was going to get sick. And we slept in different rooms. She gave me the bed, actually, and she slept on the couch. And she turned the fireplace on and she kept turning the heat off when we were at the Mayflower Inn, and she did that also when we were in Pound Ridge. You'll see, you'll see the video. Roll the video, Tanny. Okay, so at Mount Washington yesterday, it was a record low, 107 degrees below zero, 107. In Bedford, it was negative two without the wind chill. The wind was howling to like 50, 60. It was like a hurricane here. So it was probably 70 below. China, because she wasn't feeling well, slept in this other bedroom, and it's a very small room with one heat vent. So when you turn the heat on, it gets very warm in here. This room where we're supposed to be staying is a little cavernous and these heaters aren't working properly. So this room is freezing and the windows are frozen. It was negative two. It was negative two. Honey, I feel terrible. With, with the wind chill. What does China do 
Her room is too hot, so she turns the heat, not down, she turns it off. <laughs> okay? She turns it off. I wake up this morning in this bed by myself. She's in the other room because the room's too hot and my windows are frozen. Phone, this is my I life. No, I had no idea. And now she's on her beamer. And it was so hot, it was like I was having a dinner date with the devil. <laughs> and I woke up and the heat was off and I literally was freezing. Well, I didn't, I, I'm really sorry. Like, honestly, I would never do that to you on purpose. You know that. Mm. Whoa, whoa, check this out. Oh, <gasps> wait, that's not somebody's Christmas ornament? What? Oh no, that's so sad. <laughs> we can't put that on Cal Preach. That happens all the time. We we're can't. in Connecticut. You know we're, what town is in Connecticut? Lyme, Connecticut. You know what Lyme, Connecticut's famous for? Lyme, Lyme disease. disease. You know where you get Lyme disease from? Where? From a deer tick. Right. That's why there's dead deers all over the place. Not from the Lyme disease. I bet you the car looks just as bad as that. Well, that deer's gone. Yay! We're not going to run out of gas and ruin the day. We are finally back at the house after a pretty long drive. Uh, it didn't seem like it took that long to get there, but it seemed like it took a lot longer to get home for some reason. And we took the same exact route. Go figure. Anyway, um, we had an extended conversation about heaven and uh, started to kind of like get into it a little bit about heaven and what heaven's going to be like, which is the most ridiculous argument to be having because <laughs> like, honestly, does anybody know really? I mean, I heard a great quote once that was, heaven will be full of what the eye has never seen and the ear has never heard. And that's wisdom because that is the truth. None of us, none of us can even begin to imagine what heaven is going to be like. I don't know. It was kind of silly. It's like, it's not a 24 hour church service. I mean, you're not like sitting on a cloud plucking away at a harp for eternity, you know, <laughs> but trying to have a debate about heaven is like trying to have a debate about tomorrow's news it's just we don't know let's just be really really patient with ourselves because anything that is worthy takes time to mature and to grow there's just no life hacks for growth and holiness and maturity in our faith it's like we've got to go through it practicing that patience in our jesus journey and practicing that patience with others on their Jesus journey is of utmost importance because I just know that for me, I've taken two steps forward, one step back. If you have a friend that you're struggling with, just doesn't seem like they're growing or that you just feel like they're not getting it the way maybe you're getting it. Practice your patience with them. It's not fun to admit, but there have been several years in my journey where I definitely probably could have been flying, but I was walking, crawling, to be honest. <laughs> I think it's because I was so used to being in pain that that's what I identified with and that's what I felt comfortable with. So when things started to ease up and things started to get better, it was so foreign to me that I, I think it scared me. And I think it made me feel like I was a stranger in a foreign land. Like I still struggle with it a little bit, if I'm being honest, but it's definitely corrected itself in many ways. I feel like I'm in a much better place. One thing's for sure is that I was definitely loved to the cross. I wasn't led to the cross. I was loved there. And I think that makes a very, very, very big difference in um, how people receive Christianity. And, uh, you know, somebody very early on just said to me, China, the righteous believer has God on their mind two times a day. And I was like, okay, what two times? <laughs> when? <laughs> and she said, the righteous believer has God on their mind day and night. So I was like, wow, that's really cool. And that just helped me understand that meditating on the Lord all day long, meditating on God constantly is part of the key to attaining that intimacy with Jesus because you have him on your mind 
twice a day, day and night. So I'm going to bed and I pray that you guys sleep like the angels that you are. And remember that Jesus will never be dethroned. Peace of Christ. Hi, everybody. So we've been doing the serenity prayer together every single morning. I say, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things, things I cannot change. change. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You just have to breathe in. Honey, you just I, You sprayed it on my tongue. Every single Sunday, I've been doing California healing. Mm -hmm. You felt really bad because you're like, I hijacked your Sundays. I'm like, you finally gave me my Sunday back. I know. Unless you guys think I should be on Cal Hill. I don't it's know. women only. Oh, Do you know how much good. healing is going on? Yes. There? Everyone, we've got your prayers. We've got your back. The best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. I just thank you for every woman that is watching right now and that there'll be a strength that comes to her. The fact that he said, I will help you. I just held on to that. He was my help. Let's sing out this chorus. It's your breath. I was gonna ask you if you would be our our patriot. You be your mascot? No, well, because it's Patreon. I want to know if you'll be our Patriot. What? You, what you, don't even know, you don't even know what it requires. What all, all you would have to do is come on and sing the Serenity Prayer every single time in the beginning. That's it. No, I would never do that. The courage to change the things I can. Ba, 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 ba. And the wisdom mm, to, to know. know. The difference. That was really good. Listen, for so many of us, being of service is really important, and that's what Cal Healing is doing, especially if you're a Christian, if you're a woman, this is creating this wonderful, beautiful community where they are. I mean, I've popped in on this, I've overheard from a distance. They are doing God's work. Aww, God's okay. work. You are creating this environment, this culture, this safe space for women to come together and to band together and to be there for one another and to be of service and to spread uh, spread the word. Every single week there's a brand new testimony. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite, you know, to hear how people came to God. It's amazing. I'm not allowed. But you could sing, God grant me the serenity every single time. I can't time. believe you just got me to do that. <laughs> That's going to turn up somewhere and somebody's going to be just grilling me for that. California healing. Check it out. Hit that link. Get your heel on. Get your heel on.